Hello and welcome back to another episode of A Blessing in Divorce. Today we're going to be talking about part two of our six-part summer series that started a couple of weeks ago with an introduction. Last week in part one, I talked about understanding and healing our pain story. And in that episode, I mentioned going inward for our healing. And so that is what we're talking about today, that healing is an inward journey. And of course, let's talk about how do we do that. So I'm looking forward to getting into the story with you because, or this episode with you, because it is crucial to our healing that we take the time to go inward because we need to understand ourselves, who we are, what we want. There are so many questions. So healing after divorce is a deeply personal and multifaceted journey. It involves emotional healing, mental healing, sometimes physical and spiritual healing and practices so much self-care basically right and for those of you who have questions about what self-care really is or how that's supposed to help during a divorce this is definitely the episode for you i've talked about self-care before many times but today we're going to talk about it a little bit differently so i really want to get into several strategies that and practices that will help you turn inward for your healing so join us for this very important episode and part two of our summer series Hello and welcome back to another episode of A Blessing in Divorce. I am so grateful to be allowed into your headset and day today. My name is Elizabeth and I'm the host of this podcast and the owner and founder of The Separation Club, which is the club you never wanted to be part of, but the best club to be in if you're going through separation and divorce. Here we talk about how to heal, move forward and find love if you're so inclined. Also, motherhood through divorce, finding yourself, and creating the life you deserve. Our tools are community, sisterhood, honesty, vulnerability, spirituality, and coaching. And that's when we aren't talking to our experts. I'm also a divorced mother of four adult sons, remarried, and a stepmom to three. So we will be talking about everything that goes with all of that here. If you are recently separated, thinking of separating, divorcing, or even beyond your divorce, but still feeling it, then this is the podcast for you. Okay, welcome back. And let's just dive right into this very healing episode. And I have so many strategies for you today. So like I said before, get your pen and paper ready if you're sitting at home. Or if not, just listen and absorb this today on your walk or in your car. And then you can come back to it and make some notes next time. So I want to talk to you about healing, of course, and specifically and specifically turning inward. So first, let's take a look at the differences between emotional and mental healing, because I'm going to be talking about both today. And I don't know about you, but I can often get confused about the difference between the two. They are quite different, though, and understanding the difference also helps you get into sort of the pieces of the healing that you need most. I realize that the tools that I give you today, some of them are going to really resonate with you and you need just needed to hear just that. And for others, you might be like, ah, that's not my area of difficulty. Um, then that's fine. This, these tools are meant to cover a variety of areas of healing and difficulty and struggle. And I am sure that you will hear at least one, if not several or many tools that will be helpful for you today. Pick the ones that that hit you in like, oh, wow, I needed to hear that. That's one you need to write down. That's one you need to stick with and come back to. OK, so, OK, let's do this. Let's first talk about the differences between emotional and mental healing. So they're very related, obviously, um, but they're distinct in the aspect of sort of the overall well-being of, of ourselves and, and what we need to heal. Understanding the difference can make you more effective, as I mentioned. So emotional healing deals with the processing and releasing of emotional pain. So again, a little bit of reference to the, um, the first episode of uh, the pain story. Um, while mental or cognitive healing focuses more on reshaping thought patterns, that's the ego portion of the first episode of the first phase of this uh, series that we're doing. So we we need to heal the mental side of us to develop and, and improve our mental clarity and focus and decision making, whereas we need to work on our emotional healing <clears throat> to stop crying all day, you know, that kind of thing, right? So both are essential for our overall and psychological well-being. And 
understanding the various practices that fall under each will help us like just create that general well-being and feeling of competence and feeling capable and so on. So let's get into each one a little bit. The first one I want to talk about is emotional healing. So this is, uh, this is again, part of our turning inward episode, right? So emotional healing, let's take a look at what's inside. We have so many emotions when we go through something like divorce or other um, major life events like loss, grief, um, job loss, for example. It could be so many things, but we tend to focus on divorce around here. But the strategies will help you throughout life, by the way. I have turned back to my healing practices from my divorce so many times in an effort to heal other things that I have gone through since then. So when we're healing our emotional being, our inner self, it is important to recognize things like grief. Also acknowledge feelings of loss, sadness, anger, confusion, frustration, all of these emotions that you're feeling. Allow yourself to feel the emotions. Allow yourself to grieve. Allow yourself to fully like cry buckets. Feel it so that you can process it. If you don't even allow yourself to feel anything, then it's really hard to put your finger on what part of yourself you need to heal and which emotions are the ones that are causing the pain, right? So of course, I will be talking more about grief next week because that is our focus of the phase three of um, this, or the part three, I should say, of the six part series. But um, I just wanted to mention it today. Another part of allowing ourselves to grieve or feel our feelings like sadness and anger is journaling because it is a powerful tool in sort of expressing our feelings because you express them onto your into your journal like I'm feeling really sad today because of this and this and this or I'm really feeling my grief today and this is how it's showing up or this is why or this is what triggered it so this is your journal is a place where you can get in touch with your feelings and start writing down the thoughts that come to you as you're in the middle of them it's actually so illuminating and so valuable the information that you can put in your journal during a, an episode if you will so i really encourage you to do that and i'll just do a really quick plug for the joy journal here the joy journal is structured and designed by me for you and for this journey specifically the joy journal is all about finding your joy, of course, but also recognizing what needs to be released. So I really encourage you to pick that up. And of course, the link is in the show notes. Okay, I'll move on. So in, another step in our emotional healing is to seek support. Now, you know, you, you can talk to your friends, your family, or you can go to a professional as well, like a therapist or a coach. These Everybody can provide emotional support. And honestly, um, if you... If I was going to give you one piece of advice, it would be to have all of those things. Uh, one of the uh, the tools that I give to people when they first come into my Facebook group and, and into the separation club, if you will, is a free separation checklist. And if you don't have it, again, link below. Um, but in it, there is, you know, there's uh, one of the points is on building your team, your divorce team, if you will. And it's not just about your lawyer and your financial person. It's also about your friends and the people who are going to support you and hold your hand and, and let you snot on their shoulder. You know what I mean? So definitely seek support. And I know sometimes it can feel really hard because you feel like you're burdening people or bothering them and you're kind of waiting for them to come to you. Don't. They don't know what you're going through. They don't know what it's like. That's one of the great things about the Facebook group that I run. It's a place where women can pop in and get that support by other from other women who know exactly what they're going through because they're going through it themselves or have recently gone through it. So that is a great place to go as well. But make sure to find those friends that you have or make new ones who can be there for you. I had two or three really amazing women show up for me when I was going through it and you know one of them she was absolutely my best friend and she continued to be my best friend but I also made new friends it it was surprising to me some of the people who stepped into my life when I was going through that and it also was surprising to me some of the people who just were not able to be there for me and that might happen to you as well another crucial part of emotional healing is to show yourself kindness, compassion, and understanding. Be patient with yourself. Know there's going to be good days and bad days. You're going to be taking steps forward and backwards. 
avoid self-criticism. That is just going to make everything take so much longer. It takes the time it takes. Don't compare yourself to others and remind yourself that it's okay to be hurting. It's okay to feel vulnerable. It's okay to have really bad days. It's all okay. It's also okay to feel good days and be happy. It's okay that not every day is bad. Remember all of that. Okay, let's move into the more sort of mental or cognitive healing. So this is about our brain. Yes, so one of the things that can really help with this kind of healing is to to get into mindfulness practices, meditation. You know, when we when we engage in mindfulness practices, we we stay present first of all, and that helps to reduce things like anxiety, you know, spinning, um ruminating on the past, stressing or feeling fearful of the future. It just brings us into the present moment and the realization and hopefully also the acceptance that you're okay right now. And that's kind of all that matters because the only moment that you can change or impact is right now, is the present moment. So meditation is an incredible tool to help calm your mind and provide some clarity and perspective. Another thing that you can really do uh, around this sort of mental healing Uh, is to reframe your negative thoughts. I know they can be really prevalent when you're going through something like divorce. Your ex might be blaming you for all kinds of things. It's important to, to understand that whatever they are saying, whoever they are, okay, ex, families, partners, whatever, what they are saying is based on their own personal stories, their own beliefs, their own need to be right, whatever. It's their own ego, their own pain stories, to refer back to part one, it's important to not take them on as your own. So even though it might feel really hard to hear these hurtful and mean things from your ex, for example, and this person knows how to hurt you and knows how to say things that are going to have impact, don't take it on as your own. Learn to reframe things. If they are blaming you and saying it's all your fault because you didn't want to have sex often enough, for example, that's why they had an affair. Instead of saying to yourself, it's all my fault because I wasn't there for my partner, you could say to yourself, you know, I did the best that I could and there were reasons I wasn't comfortable or interested in having sex and we could have worked on this together. This isn't all my fault. It's just a different way to look at it and it's a more truthful, honestly, a truthful and compassionate way to look at it. If someone is saying to you, or you're so lousy at making decisions, or you're just no good at doing this, don't take it on as your own. Don't start saying that to yourself. Reframe it. That's their opinion. I don't agree. And then, of course, there's just the stuff that we say to ourselves every day. You know, we look in the mirror and we go, oh, my God, look at you and look at this. And you gain weight or you've lost weight or blah, blah, whatever, right? Stop that. Like, stop that right now. Focus on positive affirmations and focus on believing in yourself in any way that you can. And if you're having trouble with that, I refer to what I said earlier, get some help and talk to your friends, okay? All right, also to to feel mentally in sort of in a better way is to engage in some new activities, do some new stuff so you're not constantly buzzing about the past. Start creating a new future by engaging in um, new activities, take a trip, meet new people, join new clubs, try a new hobby, engage in activities that you can enjoy and that provide a sense of accomplishment and distract your mind from all the negative stuff. It's okay to go and do something that is just for you. Sign up for a cooking class or a sewing class or a book club or I don't know, whatever it is that you want to do, whatever you find interesting. There's somebody else out there who finds it interesting as well and they might have started a club about it. Maybe even check out um, local groups uh, on meetup.com in your area, okay? So this is these are great avenues to provide some healing and distraction in those areas. As we turn inward and work on our healing, it is important to also take care of this physical body that is holding all our emotions and all all the pain and everything that's going on. We need to be... We need to have a healing mentality towards our physical selves. This is the temple from which we will be living out the rest of our days, right? So I know 
you know, for a lot of you, so things like physical exercise might not be your thing. It was my thing. When I was going through this, I I'm, used to be a personal trainer previously, and I love working out. And it was something that I knew made me feel good. So I worked out a lot, not obsessively, but I made sure that I did something every single day because working up a sweat and getting my heart rate up, it just really helped me feel better. And it's incredibly distracting. And when you are exercising, dopamine and all these things that happen, it can help reduce depression to some degree. So I really encourage you to take care of yourself. It's a very loving thing to do for yourself. It's healing. So make sure to, if you can't exercise or don't want to, if that just isn't your thing, move your body. Okay, go for a walk, go for a bike ride, go for a swim, do something, go to yoga, do something, move your body. The other thing that that does, it moves energy through your body. When we are going through this, there's so many blocks. There's actually, it can feel like physical pain in your heart, your gut feels out of order, everything just, you know, you feel anxiety and stress and confusion. And these are physical feelings as well. Exercise or movement helps to move the energy. Dance. If you can't do anything else, turn on your favorite music and dance. It'll move this negative, stagnant energy, this painful energy through and out of your body. Like even just jumping up and down and shaking. Shake, 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 shake. Like literally move your body and move the energy, the negative energy out of your body. This will help you reduce stress. It improves your mood and it just boosts your overall well-being. Like this is an important part of your healing. Also, when we're nourishing our body and thinking about what we're doing, think about what you're eating. If you're eating food that makes you feel like crap, you're going to feel even crappier than before. And potentially you're even beating yourself up about eating crappy food, right? Ask yourself when you open the fridge or you get up in the morning and you're hungry and you're making yourself breakfast, or maybe you're not hungry at all, but you should eat. And then you can ask yourself, I'm going to prepare myself a meal. What is the most loving meal? that I can prepare myself. Like what is, if I am going to be loving towards myself, what would be the meal that I would create for myself or make for myself, right? Trying to maintain a a sort of a balanced diet and eating foods that are good for you and nourishing, these things can help you feel better. They help you sleep better. They help you have more energy through the day because maybe you're not sleeping great. You know, all of these things are good and positive and healing. So this is part of your inward journey. And speaking of not sleeping well, that's another part of your physical health that you need to address. You need to rest and you need to sleep. I didn't sleep for months. Like I couldn't. I would lie awake and listen to music and read. It was awful. Like I just couldn't sleep. Every now and then I would take something to help me sleep. As a result of that, after several months of this, I ended up getting pneumonia. I was so sick. So I encourage you to take what you need to take to sleep, do what you need to do to get some sleep, you know, do all the, turn off your phone, don't read the email from your lawyer, your ex right before bedtime, like, you know the things to do, right? It is so important to rest and sleep. It really helps you cope better with your feelings, your grief, and all the stuff that's going to happen that next day, okay? Another way that we can turn inward towards our healing is connecting to our spirituality. Now, spirituality isn't everybody's thing, okay? And spirituality means different things to different people. And I recognize all of that. For you, it may be a more religious journey. For others, it is a completely different journey. But I really believe that no matter what you believe in, okay, no matter where you stand on the spectrum of spirituality, we all need to tune into something that feels a little bigger than that, something we can believe in, um, something that's good, that's something that can help us shine a light on future steps, what to do next, to give us some inner wisdom and guidance. So whether you get your wisdom and guidance from God or from some kind of spiritual practice, it really, in my opinion, does not matter. What matters is that you go there in whatever way that makes sense to you. So some suggestions outside of religious practices is to connect with nature, for example. There's a lot of spiritual healing and connecting with nature. Spending time outside is grounding and it's healing. Putting literally your bare feet on the ground, laying down 
on the ground, sitting on the ground. Also activities like hiking or walking or going to the beach and putting your feet in the ocean or the lake or whatever it is for you, gardening, putting your hands in the earth. All of these practices, all of these things connect you to nature and there's something so healing. Remember, we are walking around every single day on Mother Earth. Mother Earth, she's called that because she is the great mother of the creator of everything. Everything grows from her. She births everything that we breathe and eat and stand on and sit on and have and are. We are her. She is us. We by connecting with that energy, by with working with the earth, with walking on it, hugging a tree, leaning on a tree, sitting up against a tree, whatever, you will feel more at peace. You will feel more calm. You will feel more connected with yourself. And when you take some extra time to do that, you will also become aware of the wisdom within you that is available to you. Other practices that you can explore inside sort of the spiritual healing is to engage in prayer, meditation. You can participate or attend spiritual gatherings that resonate with you. Also journaling. Again, I'm back to the journaling. And then one of my favorite practices, which was essential for my healing. And it was actually the very practice that pulled me out of my, I feel sorry for myself and I'm super angry funk and started me on my healing path. And that was a gratitude practice. Maintaining um, a morning practice or a gratitude journal of some kind to focus on the things that actually are positive in your life because there's always something. Even though everything seems to be going to shit right now or that's what it feels like, there's something that's good. There are people in there that are good. There are people that you love and that love you. Focus on that. Express gratitude for it. Feel gratitude for it. Reflect on how grateful you are and you will feel a shift in your mindset and it will bring you some sense of peace and calm and healing. All right, another practice that helps us when we turn inward is to build a new identity. So I think I mentioned it. I don't think I mentioned it today, but I did in in last week's episode about how we can feel that we don't even know who we are when we come out of a marriage, when our marriage ends. And I know I went through that and it was very much my ego was completely lost because I had identified as a wife and a mother for so long, like 20 years, basically. And now I didn't know who I was. So we need to create a new self. And so we do this by turning inward and by participating in a lot of the stuff I've already talked about today, but also by really embarking on the self-discovery journey. Like this is such an incredible opportunity to rediscover who you are. And it's not so much about going back to who you were before, before you got married, before you met this person, because you can't ever be that person again, because you did meet this person and you did get married and all of this happens. You're a new person now. And it's about rediscovering who you are and in a way creating a bit of a new identity for yourself. Now, I don't want that to become something that, again, you become so attached to that, you know, we'll get stuck in our ego again and all the stuff that I talked about yes, or last week. But try to set some new goals for like your personal life, your professional life, you know, goals like who do you want to be? I want to be a healthy person. That's a goal. I want to be a healthy person. How do I become a healthy person? Now you can start doing some of those practices, right? Or maybe you want to be, I want to be a peaceful person. I want to, I, my goal is to feel at peace. And then you can start thinking about like, how do I do that? These are the small sort of practices. Again, turning inward, you're getting to know yourself. You're developing new practices to be this person, to embrace this part of yourself. There's so much healing and forward momentum in that. And that's what we're trying to do. We need to move forward. Spending all your time thinking about what was or what isn't anymore and what you miss and what's sad and what makes you angry and what's wrong and how many ways that you were wronged. There's nothing peaceful. There's nothing healing in that. It's just hard and lonely and sad and frustrating. Start to think forward. Who do you want to be? How do you want to feel? Do you want a new job? Do you need to get a job? You know, what are the things that you need to do 
to live this new life that you are now embarking on. It can feel scary at times. I know it can. And there are many who will tell you the more scary it feels, the more you know you're on the right path. And I happen to agree with that. Scary doesn't mean bad. Scary means new. This is new. You will feel, if you feel into your body and you really start paying attention to how you feel, you will notice the difference between this is a bad idea and I'm freaking scared, but I really want to do this. This is exciting. Start to learn how to tell the difference between those two. And you will get to know yourself in a way that is truly beautiful and will really help you because you can keep tuning into this when you have questions, you don't know what to do. You'll just keep asking this person who seems to know exactly what you need to do. And you know who that is? It's you, no one else. It's you. So really embrace the journey of rediscovering yourself. The last step, honestly, in dealing with grief and, um, well, we're going to talk more about grief next week, but in sort of taking this journey inward and getting to know who you are and the self-discovery is to seek some professional help. And you can do that in various ways, of course. Um, Therapy is one of them. So, you know, really consider working with a therapist when you need to work through very complex emotions and develop coping strategies when you and also when you find that the past is just really not letting go of you. There might be some severe trauma, abuse, things like that. You definitely need to seek the help of a therapist to get through some of that stuff and to learn to cope. Another um, professional that can be really helpful is a coach. So coaching is different from therapy. Um, It's more about the kind of the strategies that I've talked about today because I'm a coach. So that's what I help people with. Um, So it's really about digging into, you know, your goals and what you, how you want to feel and who you want to be in life and the things that you want to do. So coach, life coaching can really set you up. Um, in a way that helps you achieve those goals and gives you the tools specifically and also can create a bit of an accountability system, if you will, um, providing some structure and support as you transition through and start embracing these new practices and step into being yourself. You know, like I said, mentioned the fear, the sense of like, oh my God, what am I doing? A coach can really help you with the whole like, yeah, you're doing great. Like, this is good. It's okay. You can push through this. Here's here's a way to cope with that fear or whatever. A coach can really help you with that. This is the work I do with my clients every single day, my one-on-one clients. And I would love to help you. And of course, um, how you can work with me is included in the show notes below. So feel free to reach out to me in any way that makes sense to you or grab one of my small coaching packages. Let's get to know each other. Let's start working together and let's see if we can make some progress here for you, right? And then another way that you can get some professional help in this work is workshops, um, webinars, online, in-person support groups, and also retreats. You know, I started running retreats in uh, 2021, um, So we were still a little bit affected by COVID and I started running them here at home in my lake house because being by the water is healing. And there is something so beautiful when women gather for the purpose of healing and inner growth. It is truly such a transformative weekend. And in fact, I've now that I've run several week long retreats in Costa Rica and I'm running, I'm about to run one in Italy. Um, I decided to add a third day to the weekend retreat. So it's now a three day instead of a two day. Everybody's arriving on Thursday evening and they'll be here till Sunday afternoon. Um, There's so much healing available to you and I would love for you to join me. It's such a low key sit in your track pants and sweatshirt, like in your comfy clothes all weekend. We drink tea and coffee and we hang out and we talk and we heal and we let go and we laugh and we cry. It is everything you could possibly imagine when you think about wanting to just sit in a safe space and rest emotionally and heal emotionally and and just also absorb wisdom you know just tuning into your own wisdom participating in practices that help you do that we definitely connect to nature that is such a big part of the work that i do and this is very much what we do here and at all our retreats I would love for you to join me at my lake retreat uh, coming up in September, September 12th to 15th. And again, all the details are in the show notes. Before I go today, 
as I've shared so many strategies for healing. And I very much encourage you to join me again next week, by the way. I'm going to be talking about grief, overcoming grief. Um, But I just want to really stress that healing after divorce is a gradual process. It takes time. It requires patience and self-compassion. Do not think that you can rush this process or that there's a certain uh, time frame for when you should be done. It's different for everybody. If you feel that it's dragging, if you feel that it's like, why can't I snap out of this? Then you might be ready to definitely seek one of those professional you know, therapy, coaching, or a retreat that I mentioned to get that help can just pull you over that stumbling block that's holding you and where it's making you feel stuck. So if you're feeling stuck, that is that is truly your sign to reach out for one of those and get some help. Okay, so reach out to me, even just to have a conversation about what would be right for you. Because I, like I said, I run one-on-one coaching, I have retreats, and I also am about to kick off a brand new membership. Well, it's new and it's old. I used to run the Rising Free membership that started during COVID, and it was very much structured to, to provide support in that environment. And then I realized it wasn't really working anymore because people's needs are different now that COVID and the pandemic and the lockdowns are done, thank God. And so I shut it down in the end of last summer, and but I'm restarting it. And it's going to have a completely new structure. And I would so love for you to consider that as part of your healing journey and seeking some guidance and help. It's an inexpensive um, way for you to tune into a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about uh, last week and this week and that I will be talking about. Every month you'll be getting resources, coaching. In the group environments, you get the support group feeling in a way that is so accessible for you. So I really hope that you will go and check out our, you know, our sales page on the Rising Free membership and the launch that's happening this summer. Um, I would love for you to be part of that. Get on the wait list, okay? Get on the wait list, the link is below, so that you can um, be the first to know. You'll hear about all the specials, the launch specials, all the excitement that's coming up. I'm gonna have legal experts like you know, certified divorce financial analysts, lawyers, um, psychiatrists, psychotherapists, and so many other people talking to you, people who've been there, who understand, who work with women like you. Anyway, I could go on and on, but I won't. You can learn all about it. I'm really glad you were here with me today. I really am committed to providing you with a journey here on the Blessing and Divorce that is healing, that is forward moving, that feels empowering, and most importantly, feels accessible to you. So let me know any which way that I might have been able to do that for you and also what would help you. I love to hear from you. Make sure to check out all the links below in the show notes, and I will see you next week for part three of this summer series on healing. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and thank you for being here.